You know how when you get kicked out of a spot, they always say they're worried about getting sued or their insurance not covering if you get hurt or something like that? I've always wondered, is it possible to actually sue someone for skating and getting hurt when you're trespassing? Uh, this was a question I got from Nick Narr, and I wanna talk about it here on the channel. Let's get started. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, the channel where you can learn all about skateboarding and skateboarding related topics, from learning tricks on the shred skull to learning about skateboarding video games to all other kinds of skateboard culture items. Uh, this time we're talking about if you can actually sue someone for getting hurt while skating on their property. This is something you've heard a million times. Um, I know I have. People are always worried about their insurance and whether you get hurt and you can immediately sue them. Um, and I wanted to check out if it is actually possible to do that. So I, of course, am not a lawyer. I am a skateboarder and a web designer who happens to have a YouTube channel. So none of this is legal advice, but someone who is a lawyer is Ryan Griffith, who is from San Francisco, where he's an attorney. And someone asked him this question and he had these two interesting stories that helped illustrate how the law would actually work. So imagine there's a school and next to the school lives this really crazy dude. And he loves to see kids get hurt. So he built a skate park in his backyard and he puts little explosives in it. And he goes to, this, to the school, he gives out free skateboards, and then he goes home. He's never invited the kids onto his property, he's never explicitly told them to come skate it, but he's created this possibility. And then he just watches what happens. And the kids trespass onto his property, skate his skate park, these little explosives, send them flying all over the place. Um, is he liable in that case? They trans they trespassed on his property, right? Yeah, but obviously he kind of made that a possibility. He made that happen in a way. So that's an extreme example. What about the other way? Um, he said, what if that same guy, he's not crazy, he doesn't have a skate park in his backyard, but he has a little, his sidewalk has a little hill on it or something, and kids like to jump his fence and go skate down the hill. So what he does is he puts up a higher fence, he puts up a sign that says no skateboarding, and then someone breaks onto his property anyway and gets hurt. Is that his fault? Obviously not. So it kind of depends on the circumstances that are in play and how much you knew about what was going on, all that kind of stuff. And he also says that the law is generally reasonable. And yes, there are a lot of exceptions. I'll talk about some of those at the end. But for the most part, if it's obviously not your fault that a trespasser got hurt, you're not gonna get in trouble, but um, it gets a lot deeper than that. Of course, being the law, it's nowhere near that simple. But out of that meeting, I discovered that there existed the California Trial Attorneys Association, which kept track of all liability claims and cases in California. I spent $150 for a report that revealed that in Southern California, over the period of time from 1970 to 1990, there had been zero lawsuits involving skateboarders suing public entities. None. 18 different SoCal counties and not one lawsuit. This was how I discovered the HRA, Hazardous Recreational Activity List, an actual list of activities, including tree climbing and spelunking, that eliminated a government agency's liability for injuries sustained while doing anything on the HRA list. That was taken from the book, The Skateboard, The Good, The Rad, and The Gnarly in Illustrated History. Pretty interesting. But the idea that doing anything on the hazardous activities list immediately makes you liable is not always going to be the case. First, that was only in California. There are other states that have very similar laws, but that one was only in California. And secondly, it only specifically calls out government entities. So if it's private property, it might be a little bit different. Uh, specifically, there is something called an attractive nuisance. So you may have heard of this before. It's where if you have a, a pool, uh, I think it has to be below ground or a trampoline, there have to be fences around it because it's an attractive thing that kids might go by and say, oh, look at that pool. They go in there and they drown. And that would be your fault in the law. So you have to have a fence. You have to make it difficult for people to get into these things that might be dangerous. So does that mean you can just put up a fence around your property, throw up a no skateboarding sign and you're good? You can let people skate in there all they want and just ignore it? Well, not exactly. It's never that simple. You do have some limited amount of liability for trespassers, even on your own property. Uh, you may have heard before that if a burglar breaks into your house and gets hurt, they can sue you. That's sort of true, sort of not. 
Um, but there is something to be said for that. So if you have, uh, let's say in your backyard, there's a shortcut to the park and people cut through your backyard all the time to get to the park. And yes, they are trespassing and it is illegal for them to be doing that. And you'd rather they didn't do it, um, but you know about it. You can't set up a gun range in your backyard and be shooting all the time, knowing that people come through there. What you would have to do is put up a fence, you have to put up signs that say dangerous, gun range, all that kind of stuff, and warn people as much as you can, and then you can use your backyard to have a gun range. Um, with the uh, burglars, for example, um, if they stub their toe stealing your TV, you're fine, but if you set up a trap to specifically hurt that person uh, when you're not in danger, then that would be illegal. So for a spot like Hollywood High, let's say, they put up fences all over. I, I've driven past it. I've never actually been there, but I'm sure there's no skateboarding signs all over the place. They try to stop you as much as they can. In that case, they're probably safe from any kind of legal repercussions of someone getting hurt there. Um, I would say there's a very good chance that they will never get in trouble for somebody breaking in and hurting themselves. So why is everyone so paranoid about getting sued if someone gets hurt? Well, I found a quote from David Arnell, who's an attorney, and he's talking specifically about skate parks, but this is what he has to say. The fear of liability has prevented private and public entities from encouraging or allowing risky recreational activities, despite liability limiting statutes passed by legislatures. And the reason people are so paranoid is because there's a million stories out there, especially online, of different lawsuits that went, um, and all kinds of weird stuff. So one I found, for example, was there's a kid in West Virginia went over to his neighbor's driveway and got hurt. It wasn't skateboarding related, but kid got hurt. Their parents sued the neighbor, even though they weren't even there. And the neighbor had to pay for the medical expenses for the kid. Now, who knows how true any of that is. And uh, usually there's some other kind of circumstance. Um, there were toys in the neighbor's driveway or they invited him over uh, before and then they weren't there or something like that. There's usually something else going on. Um, like the McDonald's hot coffee lawsuit. You all know about that. Someone orders hot coffee, spill it on themselves, they sue McDonald's, they get millions of dollars, right? Not exactly. So there's always something else. In that case, what happened was the health department had warned McDonald's that their coffee was unsafe, it was too hot, and they ignored it and they ignored it. Um, and so yeah, she spilled herself and she got millions of dollars, but McDonald's appealed and all they really ended up paying was her expenses for the most part. So yeah, there are these crazy cases that make it to the news, but usually there's something else going on. Like that attorney from the beginning said, the law is generally pretty reasonable. So I haven't been able to find any cases of someone hurting themselves skateboarding and suing, but I have found some very similar cases and I'm gonna talk through a few of them. They'll usually sound like they're pretty close, but then when you get into the details, you'll find out the real reason, all right? So the first one here. So this one is about a kid suing a middle school for a skateboarding accident. But what actually happened? So what happened was the staff in the school left skateboards out in the gym. The kid got hurt, broke his ankle. But what they actually are suing for is that they made the kid walk on his broken ankle to go get ice for himself and they refused to let him call his parents. So that's what the actual lawsuit was. It's not that he tried to grind the curb and twisted his ankle. He actually got hurt and then they were neglectful in the way they handled it. This next one is skateboarding in a parking lot leads to a half million dollar settlement. And of course, there's a lot more to it than that. So this one is about these two very little kids riding on one skateboard and they're in a parking lot. The parking lot was angled downhill and they ended up down in the road where they got hit by a car. One of them hurt and one of them killed. Um, so the lawsuit was not necessarily that they were skateboarding in the parking lot, the lawsuit was that to the city, they had no children playing signs. There was no sidewalk for the kids to end up on. They had to, or a shoulder, they had to end up in traffic, didn't have a choice. And so they're suing the city for that and not suing for skateboarder getting hurt. The last story was about a kid who got hurt skating at Target. What happened? Did he try to grind the handrail out front and it shot out and he hurt himself? No, it was a little kid inside the store grabbed the skateboard off the shelf, jumped on it, did some stuff, and ended up hurting himself really bad. And they were suing Target, not necessarily about the skateboard, but about having dangerous things available. Um, and that was what the question was about, whether they're liable for having 
you know, hammers and other things that people could hurt themselves with. And I didn't see how that case turned out. They never updated it or anything. I don't, I don't know if it got thrown out or what, um, but it doesn't really matter. It still costs Target money to fight this lawsuit about skateboarding. And I think that's the real concern here. So let's assume that when someone throws you out for their insurance or whatever, that that's the real reason. I think part of it is they don't want kids skating in front of their door where old ladies can't go in because they're scared. You know, it costs them money to have people skating there or whatever. If the real reason is because they're worried about their insurance and their liability, there's a very small chance that you would ever win a lawsuit, but you could still file one. It could still cost them money to do that. So I think that's really the reason why, you know, people are always trying to protect themselves and their own interests, which makes sense. So that's what I was able to find. If you have found any specific lawsuits about skateboarding at a spot and getting hurt, let me know about those below. I was not able to find any that are just a kid doing a trick and getting hurt. But if you found any, let me know about those below. Until next time, here's some more videos I did recently you might wanna check out. I also have my logo on the screen right here. You can tap that so you can keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.